Well, good morning and good evening, everyone. I have um, that it's 9 p.m. here, 8 a.m. Jakarta time, so we should get started. Um, I don't think Garrett is on the line right now. I think he may have had another meeting to um, be in. So I'll just uh, start the meeting by saying thank you everyone for participating today. Our topic is the crop cutting survey for estimating the yield of paddy and secondary field crops. Um, I'm looking forward to this one. I know I've, I've seen Ratna give a presentation on this and I'm curious to see if there's been any changes since uh, I last saw that presentation. Um, Pardon me a minute. <laughs> I have a helper. <laughs> um, Pak Habibula, would you, do you have any uh, comments that you'd like to share with us tonight or this morning? Okay, okay thank you for your time, Shara. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning to everyone in Indonesia and good evening to everyone in the U.S. Nice to see you. Uh, in our series of training on the area sampling frame and crop cutting survey. I'm glad to see the people from the USDA NAS keep staying with us from the beginning until the decision, like Sarah, Mark, and of course, uh, uh, Ogi and others whom I cannot mention one by one. It is an honor for us to share our experience with all, with all of you, hopefully, you enjoy our, our two first uh, presentation on a sampling fair or uh, paddy and miss. Once again, I also would like to thank you for your question and valuable comment. We do appreciate your attention on what we implement in Indonesia to provide the production feature of food crop uh, commodities. Today, our young statistician, Ratna Rizky Amelia, is going to share with you our experience in conducting the crop cutting survey in, in, the, uh, in Indonesia. As you may already notice from our previous presentation, we need to multiply the harvest area information obtained from the area sampling frame survey by the yield to estimate the production. In this regard, the crop cutting survey comes to pay for yield estimation. That is why the implementation of the survey is very vital for us. As previous presentation, uh, hopefully you can obtain some understandings about what we do to estimate the yield of a uh, food crop in Indonesia from today's present presentation. Again, we welcome any question and we will, we will comment from all of you. That's all for, from me. Stay safe and healthy. Have enjoyable discussion. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Uh, Ratna, would you like to start? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, yang terhormat Bapak Habibullah, yang kami hormati Bapak Kadarmanto, dan yang kami hormati pula Bapak dan Ibu dari BPS. Good morning all and good evening to the USDA NAS team. Uh, I hope all of you are healthy and well today. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Ratna. I am from the Subdirectorate of Food Crop Statistics. Uh, well, harvested area and productivity might be just like salt and pepper. So, after the previous time, we talk about the harvested area data. So it will not be complete if we don't talk about the productivity data. So today I would like to share with all of you about how BPS uh, conducting crop cutting survey uh, to collect the harvested area data, especially to collect the especially how we uh, developing crop cutting survey based on the area sampling frame. Okay. Uh, technically, as Pak Habibullah said before, that uh, food crops production data in Indonesia is estimated by multiplying uh, food crops harvested area and productivity. 
And at the previous meeting, uh, Pak Kadir had shared with us that Rice harvested area data in Indonesia have been uh, fully collected using area sampling frame. However, the productivity data is still uh, collected uh, using crop cutting survey that based on the uh, household frame. Uh, the use of the household frame uh, actually suffered from some limitation, which is uh, costly and also uh, time consuming. So, in the end of 2018, uh, we started to develop a crop cutting survey for paddy based on the area sampling frame. Uh, the pro uh, this project is part of the national project in improving uh, food crop statistic. So, today in Indonesia, we have two different methods in collecting a crop cutting survey. Uh, in collecting rice harvest uh, productivity data, we use a uh, crop cutting survey that based on the area sampling firm, while for uh, the crop cutting survey uh, for the secondary food crops, uh, it's based on the household frame or the list frame. Uh, the secondary food crops uh, consists of the maize, uh, cassava, peanut, uh, soybean, and also sweet potato. So what's the difference between uh, the two methods, uh, the crop cutting survey based on the area sampling frame and the crop cutting survey that based on the household frame? Let's have a look to the next slide. So this is the timetable for uh, conducting crop cutting survey in Indonesia. Uh, crop cutting survey for both paddy and secondary food crop is carried out, uh, is conducted every year, uh, which is divided into three periods that we call it as Sabron. Sabron one, it's uh, from January until April. Sabron two, it's from May until August. And Sabron three, from the September until December. Um, for the crop cutting survey for the secondary food crop, uh, we conduct the household update every four months and the sending of the list of the sample uh, is also every sabron. It is in the last uh, month of the previous sabron. Uh, however, for the crop cutting survey for PEDI, uh, we send this uh, select sample twice in a sabron. So for example, for sabron one in uh, January, April, we send the a sample on December for for the survey on January and February and also we send again the sample on February for the survey on March and April. But uh, the data collection in the field uh, is conducted every time if there is a harvest in the selected sample. Well, uh, this is the business process of crop cutting survey that based on the household frame. Uh, in the first stage, uh, it is the selecting uh, census block. So we select the census block sample from the census uh, frame, which is from the agricultural census 2013. Uh, it is prop proportionally with the number of the farmer as the size. And in each selected census block, we need to conduct updating of household frame to get the information of the household that will be harvested until the next four months. So we need to fit, uh, we need to visit the each of the household in the selected uh, census block and ask the farmer about what commodities that they call fitted and when they will uh, harvest uh, their commodities. And based on the household updating result, uh, then we select uh, several, host, uh, several household that will be harvested on the certain sabron. Uh, after that, we select the sample swat. And the ultimate uh, sampling for measuring yield of each household is a sample plot size 2.5 meters square. And in the selected 
plot, we do a tracing, cleaning, signing, and weighting the crops. Uh, beside the information of productivity, uh, we also collected Support, uh, supporting information such as the planting system, the use of the fertilizer, pest control, and uh, and other information. So after measuring the selected sample plot, uh, we also interview the farmer that cultivated the field. Uh, well, it's actually really a long process and. As I said before, that the entire process is practically time-consuming and costly, especially because we need to update the household sample every four months. So, uh, in the crop cutting survey for Paddy, that based on the area something frame, uh, we cut the process from the step one until the step four. Okay. Well, uh, this is the business process of crop cutting survey that based on the area sampling frame. In the first stage, our methodological team in BPS will select the sample of subsegment from database that consists of the information of the location, uh, the coordinate location of subsegment and its growing pace from the area sampling frame survey. And in the next stage, the surveyor uh, will identify the farmer that cultivated the selected subsegment. So if in crop cutting survey that based on the household frame, we know the farmer first and then the looking and then we looking for the location of the uh, field. While in the crop cutting survey that based on the area sampling frame is the opposite. So we have uh, found the location of the rice field, and then be looking for the farmer that cultivated uh, the field. The next process from the selecting sample plot, harvesting and measuring the productivity, and then the, infer the interviewing the farmer, is just same with the process of the crop cutting survey that based on the household frame. So uh, this is the sampling frame and the sampling unit of the crop cutting survey that based on the area sampling frame. In crop cutting survey that based on the area sampling frame, the sampling unit is subsegment size uh, 100 meter square. Uh, this the sampling unit is uh, subsegment, which is part of the segment on the area sampling frame survey. Well, as Pak Kadir explained in the previous meeting, that the result of field observation for area sampling frame survey are uh, land preparation, vegetative one, vegetative two, generative, harvest, and other information such as damage, uh, rice field for other crops, and uh, non rice field. And then we take uh, uh, vegetative one, vegetative two, and generative as a sampling frame. However, because the generative phase has a long period of time, it can be from uh, one until it can be one day until more than two months after the uh, observation period of the area sampling frame. So, in for the use of the crop cutting survey, we divide the generative phase into uh, two phases, which is the generative one and generative two. Well, uh, it is the example of we select the sample. Uh, we select the sample for crop cutting survey for uh, January and February 2020. So uh, we use uh, the sampling from uh, the sampling frame from area sampling frame observation result on November 2019. And we take the vegetative one, vegetative two, and generative one because it is expected uh, will be harvested on the period of the survey on January and February. Uh, 
Um, in the crop cutting survey, based on the area sampling frame, we don't select the sample slot. So um, the determination of sample slot is based on the coordinate location of the center of subsegment. And to search the coordinate point in the field, uh, we can ask the area sampling frame surveyor and we also can use um, coordinate search applications such as uh, Google Maps or ways uh, to find the location of uh, the field. Um, sample of sample plots are selected randomly from the selected SWOT and the number of plot sample in each SWOT is only one plot because uh, the homogeneity characteristic of crop of crops in the same uh, SWOT. And the procedure for selecting a sample plot for PD is uh, same as the procedure for secondary uh, food crops. Uh, well, one of the most challenging in conducting crop cutting survey based on the area sampling frame is how to find the farmer. We need to contact the farmer in order to find out the harvest date and ask permission to conduct the survey in their, in their field. Um, this issue arises as we don't have information about to whom uh, selected subsegments uh, belong to. So, and the only information that we have is only the coordinate location of and the ID number of the subsegment. So uh, the surveyor usually, uh, so the surveyor need to identify the owner of a select the owner of the or the farmer that cultivated uh, the the field uh, at most one month prior to the survey and based on our experience some of the effective ways to find farmer is by asking other farmers in the same area and so uh, if we visited uh, the location of the sample and sometimes we uh, we find the other farmer that that cultivate their land so uh, we can uh, ask them directly uh, who is uh, the farmer that cultivate uh, the the field that will be uh, that we uh, took as a sample and we also can ask the uh, the local the the head of local farmers group because uh, they usually know all of the farmer that cultivate uh, the field in their area and also we we could ask the neighborhoodship and also asking our sampling surveyor and uh, we also can ask the agricultural extension officer. So this is the step in collecting uh, harvested uh, productivity data in the field. So in the first step, we'll locating and marking of subplot for har harvesting. And then in the second step, we harvesting and tracing the crops and then we recording the week, uh, as well as taking the photos of the process of uh, the waking so it can be a proof that the surveyor uh, could uh, do a crop cutting survey correctly. And the final stage is interviewing the farmer to get the supporting information. Well, it is the tool that we use for crop cutting survey. It is consists of 20 pipes, four page, three pot, scale, and bag. The another challenge in conducting crop cutting survey is the tool, uh, which is very heavy. And the weight of one device 
maybe it's ar it's around or more than 10 kilograms and this is quite difficult for surveyor especially for women to bring this tool to the location of the uh, to the field moreover if the root uh, in the field is slippery even before we all, we still use a very heavy manual scale so uh, since last year we tried to change the scale into the digital scale okay well this is the website that we use for data entry on, uh, for the online data entry uh, in the BPS uh, regional office so after the surveyor collect the data in the field, they send the document uh, to the BPS office and then the staff of the BPS will enter it to the website online. And this website uh, is also used to monitor the progress. So, uh, some of the problem that still faced by BPS in conducting crop cutting survey is the farmer in the sub, sub district or district usually harvest their crops in the same time, and uh, nowadays they also use combined harvesters. So, uh, the harvesting process could be more efficient and faster but it also causes the surveyor too late to harvest the selected plot. Uh, besides the limited number of surveyor and the limited tools for crop cutting survey are also remain problem that we face. Uh, some of the efforts that we have made so far to minimize the impact of these pro uh, problems uh, is to encourage uh, the surveyor to make a better approach uh, to farmer so that the surveyor can ask farmer not to harvest the selected plot. So maybe it's okay if you want to harvest another part of the field, but please just leave uh, this plot for us to take the survey. Um, Today, the collection data from the crop cutting survey is still using PEPI or paper base. And the main obstacle uh, that is often happen is that uh, the staff in the regional office don't immediately enter the data after they receive the document from the surveyor. Uh, they usually wait until um, some documents are collected but it causes uh, the entry process become late and also the evaluation process of uh, being too late. So for this reason, we tried to develop crop cutting survey for PD using CAPI. And this CAPI is part of the integration of online data collection system for the data collection, validation, monitoring or tabulation, and also the sampling process. So uh, in this July, we have trained our surveyor via online training. And in the next August, we will try to uh, conduct a pilot survey. And if it's success, we will um, implement the system for collecting rice productivity data for the sub round three starting from uh, September 2020. And maybe if we success to implement it, uh, to implement this CAPI, we will share uh, with you more about it in the next time. Uh, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Ratna. Oops. Sorry. Thank you, Ratna. Um, I, I know we are going to have some questions. So please, USDA, keep typing. I can see you typing um, as we 
as I speak. Um, let me go up to the top of the Zoom of the chat and start in on questions. So, do you have specific procedures for locating the um, 2.5 meters square crop cut plot in the sampled subsegment? And particularly, like, when, I assume you're going to do something with random numbers where you walk so many rows or so many paces. Do you start that from? the actual center, or do you start it from the edge of the field that contains the center point? Well, actually we select the plot uh, randomly. So we made uh, some step in the side of the field. And then uh, after we measured home, how many step that uh, we took, we start it from the southwest point and then uh, we took uh, the random number, random number for the selected plot. Okay. So it it may be that um, that plot, that very specific spot where you're doing the crop cutting, may or may not be in the actual subsegment. Is that correct? Like yes. you could you could walk out, but you're in the plot that was um, sampled. Gotcha. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and you had shown us what kit they carry with them, all the supplies that they have to carry with them. I'm wondering, do they also need to carry a health kit, a medical kit with them? Do you guys have concerns about things like snakes and whatnot out in a rice field? Uh, unfortunately not. So maybe just the surveyor anticipate the condition by their self. So uh, from the office, we don't provide any medical uh, to, uh, equipment for them. Okay. Um, another question is, seeing that the crop cutting survey process is relatively new. Well, it's, it's new when you're sampling yeah, you, when you're using the area frame as your sampling frame. Can you explain how the current collected yield data measures against historic data? Are you seeing any difference in um, the, the yield data when you were doing a list frame versus now that you're doing the area frame? I think that's what Justin sure. is asking about. Justin, uh, let me know if I'm not ans asking your question correctly. No, you're, you're, you're spot on, Sarah. I wanted to see if there was a, a difference in, uh, between the two different methodologies. Well, actually the result of the productivity so far is, is not different. So uh, between the result from the household frame or the uh, other sampling frame. So the difference is just uh, that uh, the the best that we use in in the selecting uh, sample. So so far for the result, I think there is no uh, specific uh, difference between. Thank you, thank you. How many patty crop cutting experiments are done every year? So you have three sub rounds and you go out twice in each sub round. So how many crop cutting experiments are done? Well, actually, I don't really know the number. Um, maybe uh, I could, I will ask uh, Padena, could you help to answer how many <laughs> sample that we got every sub round? I don't really remember the target sample for a job run. Uh, thank you. We have around we have around eighty thousand sample for rice and for overall rice and secondary crop is about 150,000 uh, plot sample. Is that per year or per sub round? OK. 
Okay, I wrote down 80,000 uh, rice samples and 150,000 samples for the secondary food crops. But what I don't know, is that annually um, or is that for each sub round? Annually. Thank you. Thank you. And is that approximately the same as what you were doing when you used the household survey, the household frame? Yes. Okay. Uh, the number of sample is the same. Okay. All right, I missed a question. Let me get to that. You, you mentioned that you talked to the, uh, the farmer and you ask him additional questions. Are you asking what crop variety they grow? Like if it's rice, what rice variety they grow? And if so, has there been major changes in the rice varieties over the last five years? Uh, when for the secondary food crops, uh, we uh, in the household updating process, we usually ask them what the commodities that they cultivated in the uh, at the time. So uh, we could list of the uh, we could list what the commodities uh, that they uh, plant. But for the uh, crop cutting survey that based on uh, the area sampling frame, we don't ask the other commodities uh, to them. So we don't get the information of what kind of the commodities that they uh, uh, plan in the same time or in this uh, period. Actually, for the commodities that farmer plan in the in this five year, I think there is no big chance because uh, most of the farmers still uh, plan uh, paddy for uh, their uh, wetland uh, field and but for the dry land uh, the commodities is very uh, for the secondary food crops there are um, uh, corn uh, there is um, soybean and any other crops so the varieties um, uh, happen uh, likely in the uh, dry land. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pat Kadiers gave us a link to the how the crop cutting experiment is implemented. So thank you very much for the uh, link. We'll we'll take a look at that later. Um, I have a question about the sampling for patty not the secondary food crops, really just patty. When you're doing the area frame um, acreage or area harvested, there is a strata for irrigated rice fields and say dry land rice fields. Are you taking that into consideration when you're sampling for the crop cutting? Because I would expect, I don't know, but I would expect that you would have a higher yield if you have an irrigated rice field versus if you have a dry land rice field, paddy field. You're on mute. <laughs> Ratna, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Okay. Uh, sorry. Well, actually, for crop cutting survey for paddy, we differentiate between the uh, paddy that was planted in the wetland and also dry land. So, in the area sampling frame, we also have a stratified uh, sub, uh, stratified one, stratified two, and three. Uh, it is the the for stratified one and stratified two, it's for the wetland paddy, mm -hmm. uh, but for the stratified three is for the dryland paddy. So, uh, in the sampling process, we also uh, differentiate between them. Then, the estimation we also uh, make it a uh, a difference. So, separately, so we estimate uh, the 
productivity in the wetland and also we estimate uh, the productivity in the dry land. Okay. Thank you very much. Just writing notes to myself. All right. Um, back to questions. On average, how much time does it take to complete one crop cutting plot? I assume this means once they're out in the field. And you're on mute again, Rana. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, I'm not sure, but from the result of uh, when I supervise uh, to the field, uh, it usually take more than one hours to uh, to uh, harvest the plot, and and practically, uh, I think we could then do the crop cutting survey by myself usually we need to uh, ask help from other uh, surveyors because it's quite hard especially from the tracing cleaning and also waging uh, the crops and after uh, the process of the measuring uh, the productivity in the plot we still need to uh, interview the farmer, which the questionnaire is quite long, so we need um, more time to to conduct the the survey. Okay, thank you. Given optimal conditions, do you know what the yield potential for irrigated paddy versus dryland paddy is? Like, what is the difference in yield? And you're on mute again. Uh, in the yield, if I'm not mistaken, for the uh, wetland paddy, it uh, could be five ton per hectare, and for the dryland, it just um for more than four, or maybe uh, Padena could uh, answer the more accurate number for for us. Okay, thank you. For the irrigated paddy, we have the potential. On average, we get the yield of five to six ton per acre. But on the potential, it could get into the eight ton for each hectare. But for dry land, it's only about uh, three or four. It lower than the irrigation. Thank you. Um, do you get any moisture readings on the paddy rice at the time of the crop cut experiment? Unfortunately not. So we just assume that when they uh, measure the productivity, uh, it is in the standard of the uh, paddy that, uh, which is her, uh, which is uh, harvested so we actually don't have any moisture matter for uh, conducting this crop cutting survey. Okay. Hey USDA folks do you have any more questions? Ah uh, we got some more. Um, Prior to going out to the plot, do you give information to the farmers who own the field that you are going to visit their field? Excuse me, could uh, you repeat sure. that question? Prior to going to the plot, do the surveyors give any information to the farmers? Do they talk to the farmers who own the field that you are going to visit? their field? Like, do you give them a, a, a heads up? Do you tell them, hey, we want to go out to your field, get permission perhaps from them? 
Yes, of course, because besides uh, we also conducting the survey, we also need to get the information for from them to interviewing them to get the supporting uh, information. So uh, before we conducting the survey, we uh, ask them uh, when they will uh, harvest the time. Uh, harvest the field uh, what the exact time and even sometimes the surveyor also asks the their handphone so their uh, their whatsapp number or their uh, phone number so the surveyor could uh, uh, make sure that whether the farmer uh, will harvest uh, on the date that they uh, mm -hmm. I've made the appointment. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, after the rice has been, the patty has been cut from the field, from the plot, and it's been weighed and measured, uh, is it, what happens to the rice? Does it go back to the farmer? Um, what happens? Uh, usually, yes, uh, they give it back for the farmer because it is in the form of the patty. So, Surveyor also quite difficult to bring it to them because they need to uh, to bring the patty, so they just give it to the farmer again. But for the another crops, uh, usually uh, the surveyor uh, decide to buy the commodities that they have uh, uh, harvested. For example, the maize or the corn and the, the cassavas, the surveyor usually uh, want to buy uh, the, uh, the commodities that they have just harvested. And that's just their decision to buy it? It's not that the government pays them to buy it, the, the surveyor just uses their own money to buy it? Yes, they usually just uh, uh, the own money to buy it or, yeah, so there is no uh, specific uh, money that we give to them to buy the, uh, the commodities that they use for the crop cutting survey. Okay. You mentioned you do crop cutting for patty, maize, and cassava. What, any other food crops? Uh, the other food crop is sweet potatoes. Sweet potato. Uh, peanut. Peanut or green uh, grown nut. And uh, so corn, corn, cassava, sweet potato, peanut, and also soybean. So five uh, commodities for the secondary food crops. Okay. Uh, um, a follow-up question regarding the yield potential. Um, the response that was given, the five to six tons with up to eight tons um, for wetland rice paddy, was that for the first crop season only or does that include the second season as well? Do you get consistent yields throughout the crop year? Uh, well, actually, uh, the crop is we because we conduct uh, the crop cutting survey for the three periods. So in the usually in the southern one, it's the peak season for the paddy, but in the and then in the second southern is the low uh, the harvest the number of the harvest is lower and then the lowest is in this third southern. But uh, in the another southern, there is still uh, uh, farmer that harf that uh, plan and harvest the co the commodities. So we still uh, doing a crop cutting survey in the another season. Okay. Um, I have a question on the sampling again. Um, you mentioned 
what was it? 80,000 patty uh, samples that are taken. Do you guys set target CVs for your sample size or how do you determine your sample size? What goes into your process? And uh, at what level do you need? Do you need uh, a yield at the district level, at the regional level? What are you aiming for with your sample? As uh, for the target sample, we usually set it in the district level uh, and for every sabron. So for the sabron one, we also uh, have a target based on the uh, harvested area, but based on the information of the harvested area from the previous year. So uh, we set it for the target for the uh, upcoming crop cutting survey. So we set it in the district level. Thank you. Is every year a completely new sample or do you revisit the same segments from the following year or from the previous year? For the sample, it could be uh, different. It depends on the uh, sub-segment that will be harvested in the certain saturn. So sometimes in the sub-segment, they also change their commodities. So uh, we could uh, do uh, the crop cutting survey for paddy again because they have changed the commodities into corn, for example. So it's actually uh, different for every year. Okay, thank you. But for uh, the, yeah. No, go ahead, keep, keep going. But for, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for the, as we, as Pak Kadir explained before that, for the sample of segment for uh, every year is same. Uh, but for the crop cutting survey is uh, we select uh, it uh, depend on the condition on the field if they have the growing pace uh, which is uh, match with the commodities that we will uh, uh, doing for a crop cutting survey so we use it as a sample okay I hope my answer address your question yes it does yes it does thank you All right, um, I think I've mentioned every question that I see in the chat. If I missed one, um, USDA folks, please speak up and let me know. Or if you have any new questions, um, please speak up now. Uh, you mentioned that you wanted um, estimates at the district level. Now that's how you sample. Do you publish that or is that mostly for internal use? So do you publish district level yields for PADI? Actually for the public, we don't uh, publish it yet. Uh, so we don't have uh, any specific publication for productivity. Uh, so currently we only have the publication for the production data. So mm. it's okay. the result of the, from the area sampling frame and also from the crop cutting survey. Right. Any other questions? Yes, got another. Uh, 
do you have farmers refuse to participate? And if so, is it a lot? I know, I know you've mentioned that they can be hard to find, but once you do find the farmers, are they generally willing to cooperate? So far as I know, uh, I don't, we don't have any reviews for, uh, for the farmer uh, in participating in the crop cutting survey, but I don't really know what happened in the, uh, in the regional office. Maybe they know more about it or maybe uh, Pak Dena or Pak Kadir share uh, the different experience about it but Dina would you like to add some comment regarding this uh, Or maybe I would like to ask uh, Pak Toto Silitonga. Uh, he is from the regional offices, so maybe he know more about the condition in the uh, in the field. Thank you. Uh, sometimes we have petitions from the farmers because of uh, we don't have any contact before. We didn't have any inform before. It, but uh, actually. Uh, we can solve the problem by uh, by asking them well, what about the next sub round to go give something about the information. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, had another question on the. Um, on the production data, is it released after each sub round or at, at the end of the year? So how many times is the production data released in a year? Once, twice, after each sub round, three times? Well, the production data so far, it, we for the result from the RS something frame surface, so actually it's one a year for the public, but for uh, the uh, our governmental partner, we usually send them uh, the data every month. Thank you. Are there any differences that you've observed in the crop cutting survey this year compared to last year based on the delayed rainfall in the first season? I don't know if the delayed rainfall was this year or last year. Well, uh, as far as I know, yes, because the last year there is a Ratna, I think you froze. At least you froze for me. I'm sorry, <laughs> my connection is not stable. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, Every year, we usually uh, evaluate the result of the the estimation result of our productivity. We also compare with the condition uh, in the field, uh, and also we also search uh, the information from news and also from the website of the climate, so we can uh, validate the number of the productivity that we produce. Is it uh, is it matched with the condition in the field or not? 
to um, this year actually this is uh, higher than the number in the 2019. Justin, I assume that answered your question. Yes, it did. Uh, I'm surprised, but it, yes, it did. Uh, maybe uh, yields became better in you know later part of the year, and so thank you uh, for the uh, response right now. I have a, a question about when the surveyor is talking to the farmer and they're trying to ask about do you operate this field are they using just the map on their phone or do they have anything larger to show the farmer what plot or excuse me yeah what plot they're talking about what field they're talking about or do they actually take the farmer out to the field and say you know is this your field uh well, actually, we only use the handphone, but for uh, some uh, surveyor, they ask the farmer to go together to the uh, specific field, so uh, they could uh, give a mark on the specific plot and ask the farmer not to please don't harvest this plot uh, because we need to uh, conduct the crop cutting survey. Okay. All right. All right, USDA folks, I think that's all of our questions for now. If you have any last minute ones, uh, please speak up. If not, uh, we can collect any, oh, we got one more in. What is the percentage of moisture content that you use as the reference to be multiplied with harvested area and come up with production figures? I assume this is just referring to uh, Patty. What is the percentage of moisture content that you use as the reference to be multiplied with harvested area to come up with production figures? Uh, well, actually we have uh, the standard conversion for our uh, specific commodities. Uh, for Patty, we have uh, the conversion rate from the harvested uh, standard paddy to to the drain paddy and for the uh, commodities such as uh, what is it soybean we also uh, have the other standard because uh, the farmer when they cultivate it in the land uh, it's in different uh, what they say uh, they usually harvest uh, the soybean with the seal to uh, we convert it uh, to the specific number. Ugi, does that cover your question? Yeah, actually, I want to know. Uh... Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, I want to know if, uh, for example, because uh, my understanding is uh, to come up with production figure, they usually use uh, as a uh, in a dry basis. So I want to know uh, what is the moisture content that is used for uh, dry paddy. So is it is it like uh, what fourteen percent moisture content or how much? Because usually from if you do survey on the fields, then you get uh, like uh, 20 to 23 percent moisture content. And uh, do you convert that to get uh, 14 percent moisture content, uh, for instance, and then multiply that result to the harvested area and then you get the production. So I want to know whether uh, what, what is the moisture content? that is uh, used as the basis for that. Uh, the percentage of the moisture content, uh, I forget the exact number of it, but uh, we get the number from the special survey to get the uh, conversion number. And we convert the number from the 
uh, production. So we don't uh, directly convert the number from the productivity and then we convert it, but Oops. Matt, no, I think you froze again. Okay, I think Ratna have another problem with uh, our connection, but I will add some explanation to Miss Ugi. In BPS, we have another survey to get the conversion rate from the wet rice to dry uh, grain of paddy. So we use that conversion number for each of the crop cutting yield. And so when the crop cutting is on the wet paddy, then we multiply with the conversion number to get the weight of the dry grain rice in about 12%. Uh, oh, 12% ya, Pak. Oke. Maybe I, I want to add some comment also, Hadir. Please. To, to add some comment regarding the Bu Ugi question. I think Bu Ugi question is very, very interesting. Because actually, in conducting our propagating survey, we don't measure the, the moisture, the moisture mm. content of the, of the paddy actually. So I think this is one of the limitation of our, in our crop cutting survey that we have to add in here yeah, to complete the process. Uh, actually, what we got, what we get from the crop cutting experiment is the quantity per plot of the what we call harvest paddy. Yeah, the paddy mm -hmm. is not ready for milling process actually. So the paddy right here yeah, and then go to the milling process. And what Padena mentioned actually, uh, because we have to estimate, we, we have to provide the production figure of the rice and also paddy in terms of dry and husked paddy, we need uh, some uh, kind of a conversion rate. Yeah? We have to convert our crop cutting survey result to the dry and husked paddy quantity. Uh, that's why uh, we conduct that kind of survey, uh, as Pak Dena mentioned, in 2018. Mm. Yeah. Actually, in the survey, we do we, we did uh, experiment. We we uh, we measure the moisture rate and things like that. Yeah, but basically, in the in our crop cutting survey, we we don't measure the the moisture content of the paddy. We just okay. rely on the conversion rate. Yeah, that we get, okay. we get, we got from the open survey. Thank you. Uh, I hope I can address your question, Bugi. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Kadir. Thank you, Pak Dena. We have a, another question. Um, do you do any measurement of the amount of paddy lost during harvest? Okay, let me. Uh, so actually, yeah. Okay, please, Ratna. Okay, Kadena, first. <laughs> It's okay. Okay, for we have some measurement uh, from our survey about the amount of paddy loss during the harvest and also during the milling process. Uh, we have another survey. Maybe, Ratna, can you tell the number uh, on per percentage of paddy loss during the harvest from our last survey? Uh, unfortunately, I don't really remember, but maybe I could check it later. Actually, Mastina, we, we can get a, a broad picture. I think the, the the percentage is less than 10%, actually. Maybe less than 5%, I think. Uh, the loss percentage, I think. During the harvest, yeah, I think less than 
five uh, percent, I think. But we will provide the exact number, yeah, <laughs> for the for the USTA team. That would be that would be interesting. And is that survey done every year or every few years to calculate uh, harvest loss? Yeah, actually, we have some issue with uh, the new data for this case. We just at the moment we use the old number actually. I think the the number uh, is the was the result of the maybe more than ten percent more than ten years ago <laughs> the survey actually. Yeah, at the moment we we use the old number. I think we we have to revise. We, we have to conduct a new survey to get uh, the new the new picture around this issue. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? I have checked the number of the shrink, uh, the shrinkage that, or the loss. Uh, so the percentage of the the loss in the form of the dry body is 5.4%. And the loss in the form of the rice is 2.5%. Thank you. So have I finally asked all the questions that USDA has for tonight or this morning? I think that is all the questions that we have for now, but we may um, have more questions as we think about it. And if so, we will send them to you in a few days. Uh, Ratna, thank you very, very much for um, this presentation. This is this is a, an important topic. Uh, area getting area is only one part of the the one. Hang on me for some reason. Um, it's really good to see both how area harvested as well as yield is um, obtained. Oh, and we have. One more question. Oh, we have a thank you uh, from Justin uh, for the presentation right now. So yes, let me echo that. Thank you very much for this presentation. And also thank you to everyone who pitched in on all the questions. It's always nice to see uh, teamwork on these things. Um, our next presentation will be on the use of remote sensing for identifying cropland or crop mapping. And that will be Thursday morning, Wednesday evening. Um, and then unless anyone has any additional thoughts, questions, comments that they farewells that they would like to share. All right, well then thank you very much, Ratna. Everyone have a wonderful day a wonderful week and we will see you in about 48 hours.